Have you ever wondered why YAML is used in Kubernetes? Well, you're in for a treat today as we break it down for you. But first things first, let's get to know our protagonists a little better. YAML, which stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language. Yes, that's a recursive acronym, is a human-friendly data serialization standard. It's often used for configuration files and in applications where data is being stored or transmitted. YAML files are as easy to read and write as it gets and are commonly used for a wide variety of tasks, including setting up web servers and configuring software applications. Now, let's bring Kubernetes into the picture. Kubernetes, also known as K8S, is an open source platform designed to automate deploying, scaling, and operating application containers. It makes managing and deploying applications on a large scale much more manageable. It's like a conductor of an orchestra, ensuring every instrument, or in this case, container, performs at its best. But why does Kubernetes need YAML? Well, Kubernetes uses YAML as its primary configuration language. This is where YAML's human friendliness comes into play. Kubernetes, being a complex system, has an immense amount of configuration data. YAML files, with their straightforward and easy-to-read format, provide an efficient way to manage all this data. In Kubernetes, every operational task is represented by a YAML file. Whether it's creating a new container, setting up a network, or scaling resources, the simplicity and flexibility of YAML make it easy to define complex configurations, which is why it's the go-to choice for Kubernetes. In essence, Kubernetes and YAML are a bit like peanut butter and jelly. They just work well together. Kubernetes provides the platform for managing and deploying applications, while YAML offers a simple and efficient way to handle the intricate configuration data. Now that we have a basic understanding of YAML and Kubernetes, let's delve deeper into why Kubernetes uses YAML. So stay tuned as we're just getting started on this exciting journey into the world of Kubernetes and YAML. So why does Kubernetes use YAM? This question is one that many Kubernetes users have pondered. To answer this, we need to delve into the core characteristics of YAML and how they align perfectly with the requirements of Kubernetes. YAML or YAML Ain't Markup Language is a human-friendly data serialization standard. It's designed to be readable and easily understandable, making it a favorite choice for configuration files and data exchange languages for languages with dictionary-like data structures. When we say that YAML is human-readable, we mean it's written in a way that's intuitive and mirrors the way humans naturally describe data structures. This makes it easier for developers to read, write, and understand what's happening in their configuration files. Now, Kubernetes, the open-source container orchestration system, requires a way to define complex configurations for deploying, scaling, and managing containerized applications. And this is where YAML shines. YAML's ability to describe complex nested data structures and its human readability make it an ideal choice for Kubernetes configuration files. Imagine trying to define a Kubernetes pod, which can contain multiple containers, volumes, networking configurations, and more. With a less readable format, this could quickly become confusing and prone to errors. But with YAML, you can clearly define these configurations in a way that's easy to understand and modify. Moreover, the declarative nature of Kubernetes also aligns with the use of YAML. In Kubernetes, you declare the desired state of your system, and Kubernetes works to maintain that state. YAML files provide a clear, readable way to declare this state, making them perfect for Kubernetes. But it's not just about readability and complexity. YAML also supports comments a feature that's incredibly helpful in a team environment. Developers can add notes and explanations directly in the configuration files, making it easier for others to understand the intent behind certain configurations. Clearly, YML is a powerful tool in the Kubernetes ecosystem, but how do we use it in Kubernetes? We'll delve into that in the next scene, where we'll explore how to use YML in Kubernetes in more detail. So stay tuned. How do we use YAML in Kubernetes? Well, let's delve into it. Kubernetes, or K8S as it's often referred to, uses YAML, 
which stands for yet another markup language, to define and manage all of its objects. These objects can be anything from pods to services to deployments and even volumes. Consider a scenario where you're managing an application that requires multiple interdependent resources, such as a deployment, a service, and maybe a persistent volume. You'd need to describe these resources and their relationships in a way that Kubernetes can understand, and this is where YAML steps in. Let's imagine we have a simple web application that we want to deploy on Kubernetes. We'd start by creating a Kubernetes configuration file in YAML format. This file typically begins with three main sections, AP version, kind, and metadata. AP version indicates the version of the Kubernetes API you're using. The kind field refers to the type of object you wish to create. In our case, this could be a deployment. Then we have the metadata section where we provide a name for our deployment and optionally labels for easier management and querying. Next comes the spec or specification section. This tells Kubernetes what we want our deployment to look like. Here we indicate the number of replicas or instances of our application we want running. We also specify the container image we want to use and the ports we want to expose for network traffic. The beauty of YML lies in its human-readable data serialization standard. It's easy to read, easy to understand, and easy to create. This is especially useful when dealing with complex structures and nested configurations, as is often the case in Kubernetes. Once our YAML file is ready, we can use the kubectl command line tool to create our deployment. With a simple kubectl apply, f fullname.yaml, Kubernetes will take our YAML file and bring our desired state to life. That is how YAML works in Kubernetes. Let's wrap things up, shall we? We've learned a lot about YAML and Kubernetes today. It's time for a brief recap. In our journey today, we've dived deep into the world of Kubernetes and YAML. We've seen how YAML or YAML ain't markup language has become an integral part of Kubernetes, the popular open source platform for managing containerized workloads and services. The reasons are manifold. Firstly, we've seen how IML's human-readable data serialization standard makes it a perfect fit for Kubernetes. Its simplicity allows us to define intricate configurations with ease, making Kubernetes' task of orchestrating containers a breeze. Secondly, we've discussed the flexibility and scalability that YAML brings to the table. It allows Kubernetes to manage a wide variety of applications, irrespective of their complexity or the infrastructure they run on. This flexibility is what makes Kubernetes so powerful and versatile. Next, we dove into the practicalities of using YAML in Kubernetes. We've learned that Kubernetes uses YAML files to define its various resources, such as pods, services, and deployments. We've seen how these files act as blueprints for Kubernetes, telling it exactly what to do and how to do it. We've also walked through the creation of a basic YAML file, discussing the essentials like the API version, the kind of resource being defined, and the metadata. We've learned how each section has its own purpose, and how they collectively form a complete Kubernetes resource. Lastly, we've touched upon the importance of validating and testing YAML files before deploying them in a Kubernetes environment. This is crucial to prevent any unforeseen errors or issues during deployment. And that wraps up our introduction to YAML in Kubernetes. Remember, YAML is not just a format. It's a powerful tool that helps Kubernetes do its magic.